welcome. You're watching the Political Stock Exchange. After India Today's blockbuster coverage of the Karnataka Assembly elections, we're now looking ahead to the three big state elections. Which way are the winds blowing in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh? That's my focus on this week's edition of the Political Stock Exchange. Congress contains Rajasthan Desert Storm. Permanent peace or temporary truce? We have decided to fight election unitedly, both of our in agreement that Congress party has to go together. Will the Rajasthan polls be impacted by the Gehlot pilot feud? Is pilot's stock up? Or down. Can Gehlot beat anti incumbency? Which way are desert winds blowing? Political stock exchange. Big focus on news track a big meeting in the national capital led by congress president malikarjun kharge rahul gandhi having a role to play an attempt to bring about a rapprochement between ashok gehlot the chief minister of rajasthan and his betanwa sachin pilot has a truce been reached at all more importantly what is the data suggesting? Which way are the political winds blowing in the desert state of Rajasthan? That's what we'll focus on in the first part of the political stock exchange. I want to welcome our guests for this broadcast. Uh, with us is Rahul Verma, fellow at the Center for Policy Research, well-known election analyst. Uh, with me in the studio, Rahul Srivastava, our national affairs editor. Uh, Rashid Kidwai joins us. Nobody tracks the Congress in quite the way Rashid Kidwai does. With us for political perspective in the media plex, Shahzad Punawala from the Bharatiya Janata Party. Shahzad, welcome and squaring off against him, Dr. Ajay Kumar from the Congress. So I'll take question number one, and this is from Rajasthan. This is the weekly political tracker put out by Ashwan Deshmukh and his team at Seawater, uh, which asks people in every state some specific questions about issues in that state. So we've picked out the part from Rajasthan which deals with a, how people perceive this government and what they think about the feud between Pilot and Gehlot. So question number one, how do people perceive the performance of the Ashok Gehlot run Congress government in Rajasthan? 39.1% of the respondents in the C voter data at the moment say that they are very satisfied with the performance of the Rajasthan government. Uh, 3 in 10 say they are satisfied to some extent. 27.7% of the respondents say they are not satisfied at all and are likely to vote against the Rajasthan government of Ashok Gehlot. The net satisfaction in Rajasthan is at 40.9%. And in a short while from now, we will compare the net satisfaction in Rajasthan with the other election-bound states. Uh, so that said, let me go across to Rahul Verma for his first thoughts on the level of satisfaction. Uh, in Rajasthan with the government at this moment, it's not as low as some of the other states in the sea water tracker which we look at, but it's not as if, like in Uttar Pradesh and some of the other states uh, like Urissa, which have uh, popular governments, that the government in Rajasthan is doing very well. So it's, it's a very middling performance, bordering towards people being more unhappy than happy. Uh, that's true, Rahul. Uh, see, uh, this three-category question, which is that very satisfied, somewhat satisfied, and not satisfied at all, uh, it's very easy to basically pick the first category, which is much more likely to vote for the incumbent, and the last category, which is likely to vote out the incumbent, right? And it's the middle category, uh, which is going to swing the election this way or, uh, or uh, that way. Most people in that category are less likely to vote for the government if the government performance is not, say, above 50, 55 percent. And so in that sense, uh, uh, we will we'll know much more once you compare it with Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, 
what one what seems like in Rajasthan that the government is sort of like on an average performance, and two, uh, uh, if you compare it perhaps with the uh, performance of the central government, it may seem that the performance of the state government is rated much below. So in sure. that sense, the uh, Rajasthan uh, seems to be basically not giving a very very uh, good news for the Congress. Let me come to the second question. This is to do with. Sachin Pilot's Yatra and the damage this Yatra may cause. So Sachin Pilot has been the rebel within. Uh, he's been raising questions about the performance of the Gehlot government. How much damage could this Yatra cause? So if you look at the data that's coming out of the political tracker, Congress supporters, 3 out of 10 seem to think that the Yatra will cause a lot of damage to the Congress government in the assembly elections later in the year. 16% uh, of Congress supporters think it won't ca cause much damage. 45% of Congress supporters say it will cause no damage. Uh, BJP supporters, of course, uh, would like to believe that the Yatra will cause a lot of damage uh, to the prospects of the Congress. But let's look at the overall numbers because that's most crucial. 42% of the overall respondents in this sample said uh, the Yatra would cause a lot of damage. 18% said it won't cause much damage, 29% uh, said there will be no damage. So clearly this sense that it's not just the performance, Rahul Srivastav, of the Congress government in Rajasthan. The biggest issue, issue frankly is what happens with Sachin Pilot and unless the Congress can somehow amicably resolve that, it seems the Congress in Rajasthan could be a sinking ship. Well, uh, if you recall 2018, we had those pictures of Rahul Gandhi and you know the united colors of Rajasthan element uh, just when after the meeting with Rahul Gandhi, Mallikarjun Kharge and others uh, we had Mr. Venu Gopal holding a small press conference, no, much, not many questions taken with the Ashok Gehlot and Sachin Pilot. Not a word said by the two. Now what and they were asked to speak and yet refused to they speak. They refused to see. Now interesting thing is that if you talk to any camp they will very clearly tell you a uh, uh, wallpaper has been put on the differences. Sachin Pilot today has reached uh, Rajasthan back and he is going back on what he was doing, virtually uh, pressing on the demands. Uh, he has told the party high command there are three clear demands he has. One, the probe against Vasundra Rajay by the end of this month, that means June. The second is compensation to all the students who have lost the game because of the leaked papers. Now he says that the leaked papers, he has told the party high command, that the leaked papers are largely because uh, of the uh, State Public Service Commission and the corruption in that. Now, what he, he has told the party that the secretary's wife is a member. There are a lot of people, members whose wives and family members are a part of the State Public Service Commission. He wants all these things, demands to be made by the end of this month. Now, the problem is, Gehlot is not ready to accept any of these demands. Gehlot has very clearly told the party high command that no place for certain pilot or anybody at this last hour, there is going to be no compromise on that. That means that the deadlock continues, the Congress is just hoping things may get over. I think one interesting thing which I have learned from Congress sources is that Karnataka seems to be becoming a template for some reason in Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan where the party high command is very enthused that we could do it through what are called the local issues and hyper-local election can one win them. But this is a very divided house in Rajasthan. No, but you know, Siddharamaya and Shiv Kumar were mature politicians. They were able to put up a pretense or a mask uh, which had both of them appearing to be on the same page even if within close quarters they were fighting it out on various issues. Here you've got a situation, Rashid Kidwai, where Sachin Pilot and Gehlot are daggers drawn. Gehlot lands in Delhi, starts speaking against the impracticality of uh, Sachin Pilot's uh, demands, and he's doing it even before he meets, he, he meets with the Congress High Command. Uh, he's asked to speak later. He refuses. Sachin Pilot refuses. Can the Congress pull off a Karnataka where they get both these leaders to work together, or are differences so deep now? that it is almost inconceivable that they will be able to fight on the same team and are more likely to have some kind of a breakdown before November, December. 
Yes, so Rahul, there is a realization in the Congress, Congress leadership that Mr. Sachin Pilot and Mr. Ashok Gailot will continue to have differences of opinion. It will not be like what, what, what it was like Siddhar Ramayya and D.K. Shukumar equation before elections. So the Congress has to, the leadership has to administer some kind of bitter pill. Bitter pill means some kind of thing like, uh, you know, one proposal is that uh, uh, Sachin may be made state president much against the wishes of uh, Mr. Ashok Gailot or some other thing. So I think it is for Mr. Kharge to deliver that punch. And once he delivers, then the Congress will have to wait and see how it plays out. So therefore, I think uh, uh, in the meeting that took place uh, earlier this week, a decision has been taken. Uh, Rahul, uh, both leaders have authorized Rahul Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi in turn has empowered in that sense Mr. Malika Arjun Kharge to take a call. So we will we get to see by the end of this week or later next week what happens next. Ajay Kumar, this is Quite embarrassing after the big victory in Karnataka uh, to have your top guns in Rajasthan fight it out in the desert and be unable uh, to put a lid on their differences. Both came out, both refused to speak and it seems very clear that Sachin Pilot and Sachin and Ashok Gehloth have a much worse relationship than Siddharamaya and Shiv Kumar. You know, uh, Rahul, I was just listening to the choice of words. I mean, and you're a friend, but it's very interesting that as far as the Congress is concerned, the India Today seems to say sinking ship. Uh, two people who are, you know, it is a gone case, et cetera, et cetera. So, and, you know, I was just collecting your data. So first question is, uh, we had the same story, uh, you guys, I mean, at least some of you were telling on Karnataka and other states. Uh, I heard a previous speaker speak on satisfaction survey. So what I remember is, if I remember, noted down the numbers, correct me if I'm wrong, it's 39% satisfied. Just one second, I wrote it yeah, down. 39.1% so are satisfied, that's correct. And, and, and somewhat satisfied is how much? Somewhat satisfied is 29.6%. Uh, yeah, so. Not satisfied so at all is 27.7%. Yeah. yeah, so the question is, do you want to trust the data? I mean, I'm okay with that. I mean, I, I'm here to defend the position. The question is that, 40% satisfaction rate is a reasonably decent, uh, sat, uh, satisfied with the government, very satisfied with the government or whatever it is, is decent by any standards in terms of, even if you look at across different organizations, uh, different uh, governments. Uh, to some extent, satisfied with the people who you think would be, uh, can be inclined to vote towards you, that pushes the number towards 60%. Now that is, leave it aside, how people are going to interpret it is for you guys to decide. The fact is, that the Congress party is actively, whether it's Mr. Gandhi, whether it's Mr. Kharge, and everybody sat and had a long discussion. I was hearing Rahul speak on this, and everybody saying they didn't want to speak. Did you ask them, did they want to speak? But you assume that they didn't want to speak. That's also very okay with me, because that's your interpretation. But I'm amazed with the, 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 the angle of the discussions, and it aggrieves me a little, and I apologize if my grief is uh, very evident, for the simple reason. If you guys who are so such, ex if you are all, and you are all experts on this stuff, can come onto TV and say that there's nothing happened, it was not resolved. There's so many things after four hours, you think four hour discussion is going to bury, uh, resolve all the issues. Okay. So there was a discussion, went into the details. The fact is that the Congress President, Mr. Gandhi, have actively taken it, and it will be resolved for sure. But my request is, that much, and please show the same amount of grace for us, for the, and, and show the same amount of what you call uh, uh, a telescopic side for the, my political opponents on the other side. My question simple is that the Rajasthan government by and large with the social schemes is popular. Okay. It is important for Mr. Pilot and Mr. Gello to resolve the issue. There's no debate on it. You're making assumptions that it is not being resolved. Okay, I see the point that you're making and there is some relevance to what Ajay Kumar says because he says if you look at the very satisfied index, 39.1, and compare it to the Congress's vote share in the last election, which again was 39, it's the same. So the Congress vote bank, you can argue if you look at the data from uh, the perspective of Ajay Kumar, the Congress vote bank is intact. The others are on the fence and about 27.7% are against, but in many cases they were always against us because the BJP in the last election also had a 39% vote share. So there is some merit. He says, why look at the glass half empty? There is also the part of the glass that's half full. Now it's about you and what you want to pick. Shahzad Punawala is also asking questions about 
suggested differences in the BJP. The fact that there is the Vasundra Raja issue, which the BJP still needs to settle. She's in the fray as your tallest leader, but not really projected. And therefore, while the Congress has public differences, the BJP has these unstated differences. And we saw with B.S. Yadurappa in Karnataka, even if the differences aren't proclaimed publicly, he, there was enough done by people close to Yadurappa behind the scenes for BJP candidates to lose on 12 seats. That's the reality. People who used to be in the BSY camp won on 12 seats. That's the reality the BJP is dealing with and that's what Ajay Kumar is trying to throw at you. Uh, since I heard everybody very patiently, I hope I won't be interrupted. Please. First of all, just for my curiosity, Rahul, where does Sachin Pilot figure very much satisfied? Satisfied to some extent or not at all satisfied? <laughs> he will he'll, he'll, he'll not be satisfied. Because I can tell you one thing, government. Rahul, I can tell you one thing. No matter what we may have in terms of, uh, you know, different leaders may have different views on serving the people. But in our party, nobody sits in dharna against their own government. And I don't think Vasundra Rajeji or any other leader of the party has uh, resorted to that kind of, uh, I would say, political unchivalry. Pull their effort. Uh, Rahul, Lund, let me yes. complete. You heard Ajay Kumar for a very long period of time. I thought Ajay would would perhaps try to explain whether the promises made to the people of Rajasthan when 10 days make Kisan Karj Mafi hogi, ya paper leak ke khilaf karvai hogi. 15 papers have been leaked. You know, Rajasthan template. Rahul said that you know they are trying the Karnataka template in Rajasthan. Rahul, I would tell you the reverse. The Rajasthan template is now being set in Himachal, in Karnataka and Chhattisgarh, where who is the next Sachin pilot is being asked. After the swearing-in took place in Karnataka, you know how many people inside and outside were fighting. You know what H.K. Patil told D.K. Shivkumar, that no power sharing formula is going to take place. So these kinds of things are happening and therefore... They're in power and you're in opposition. Uh, that's right, that's right. In Karnataka, there's a, always a culture of changing the government. That culture exists in Rajasthan also. That's true. So they have to fight that. Secondly, what is the narrative with which they are going? When their own leaders are not convinced about the performance of the Rajasthan government, whatever satisfied, not satisfied, and last point from the figures you have given us. If you see Madhya Pradesh... No, no, I haven't given Madhya Pradesh away. Just because I gave you access to the data, you can't... No, 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 but data. I want to make a... I'm not letting out the number. Yeah. I'm not... I'm making a larger point. Madhya Pradesh has seen a BJP government for almost, give or take, 20 years now, right? Uh, two years they had a chance. In that time, our satisfaction rates are nearly the same or little more than what they have in five years. Which means that in the normal anti-incumbency wala states, if this is the level of satisfaction they are able to generate, this means that this is all indications that Rajasthan government is changing. And it is changing primarily because Congress has given instability, corruption and has given only politics of, you know, uh, appeasement in Rajasthan, nothing else, and therefore people are tired of them in Rajasthan. So, I want to come to the next question in the tracker, which is to do with Sachin Pilot's options. Let's take a look at what people in this uh, seawater political tracker said were Sachin Pilot's options, or at least how they perceived Sachin's options. Now, uh, should he form a new party? 20% of the overall respondents in uh, the seawater tracker said he should be forming his own party. That's two out of uh, ten voters. 35% said he should join the BJP. That's very interesting. Three uh, plus out of ten voters want him to join the BJP. 34% say he should stay in the Congress amongst BJP supporters. Now, this is interesting. 48% of BJP supporters want Sachin to come to the BJP like Jyotirath Sindhya or some of the other Congress leaders who came. Congress supporters obviously don't want him to go, but on the, on, on the average, if you look at it, you know, opinion seems to be split. The majority want him to join the BJP, but that's just a very slim majority. Uh, about one third want him to stay in the Congress and 20% think he should form his own party. Sanjay Kumar, uh, if you look at the political history of Rajasthan, it's been a state which largely has been bipolar. It swings the Congress way one time, the BJP way the other time. There hasn't been a third front. It's not like efforts haven't been made. Efforts have been made, but for some reason they haven't succeeded. Would someone, on the best of, on the back of what you know best, would someone like a Sachin pilot, in your view, be able to pull off a third front in a state like Rajasthan? Or do you think he's better off biding his time, riding out the storm, letting Ashok Gehloth walk into the sunset? Because the third front has never really worked in Rajasthan so far. Uh, Rahul, I think uh, Sachin Pilot's ability to form a third front uh, in, a short, in such a sp uh, short span of time, only six months are there left 
for Rajasthan to go for polls. I think it's, it would be a distant dream for Sachin Pilot. We have seen in the past, there are leaders who have been popular. We were discussing about Karnataka. And remember what happened in Karnataka when Yadurappa moved away from BJP, formed his own party. He was not able to win election on his own. He was capable of getting BJP defeated. But he could not set up a party which was formidable in Karnataka. I think similar situation exists in Rajasthan as well. If Sachin Pilot decides to move away from Congress, form his own government, he may be instrumental in getting BG Congress defeated. Uh, but I don't think he is in a position to form his, own gov form his own party and give both the parties uh, a tough challenge, whether it is BJP or Congress. So I don't see that situation happening in Rajasthan. No, also remember, there's a larger trend at play, Rahul Verma, which is to do with elections in India becoming more and more bipolar. So whether it's a state like West Bengal, where it's now TMC versus BJP, Uttar Pradesh, BJP versus uh, the Samajwadi Party, Karnataka now, JDS fading into the oblivion as the third front. In Uttar Pradesh, the BSP is fading into the oblivion. So elections largely seem to be becoming bipolar. So anything that Sachin Pilot tries to do, which involves setting up a third front, has a larger political trend which could play against it. Uh, Rahul, that's true. Uh, you're absolutely right that uh, in comparison to the past, more states have become uh, bipolar. Why but is that see, happening uh, in your view? Why? Uh, many reasons. But let me first answer your question on this. See, leaders are not prisoners of data and past. They create future. So there are also states which are becoming multipolar from being bipolar. A good example is Gujarat. A good example is Punjab, right? And so while it would be difficult for uh, Sachin Pilot to mount a challenge by forming a new party and uh, a, a third front, as uh, Sanjay ji pointed out, especially given there is a short period of time, but also because it's a bipolar state. So in a bipolar state, to make it a triangular contest, it's a taller order uh, for him to do that. But you can't rule out any uh, of these things. The reason uh, uh, elections are becoming bipolar in most states has to do with the national party system changing with the rise of BJP and consequent decline of the Congress, but also because settled pattern of competition such as alliances are breaking up, new parties are rising, some are declining, and so multiple reasons which leads to uh, some of these things. Okay. Uh, Rashid Kidwai, your best sense at this moment, how seriously is Sachin Pilot weighing the idea of setting up his own party? Is that something that he's actually actively thinking about or is this just posturing and trying to cut a good deal because you've got less than a half a year to go in that much time to build up a party structure to do meaningfully well because if he sets up his party, puts up his candidates, ends up with only a handful of seats, it would be mighty embarrassing for him. Absolutely. I think uh, uh, Rahul, uh, Sachin Pilot is a very, uh, uh, I would say, a shrewd politician. He knows what is the situation in the ground. He understands that Congress needs him uh, in Rajasthan and perhaps outside Rajasthan also. And the kind of treatment he's getting from the, you know, uh, three members of the Gandhi family, as well as Mr. Kharge, the, the meeting we keep talking about, which was held. So Mr. Kharge apparently had pulled up, uh, you know, uh, Ashok Gailor that his government's performance is uh, slightly on the decline. And while he had said, he had, he had described Mr. Uh, Sachin Pilot as a kind of asset. So now if Sachin Pilot's question is that if if at all is he an asset, then uh, why is he not being used? Why his services are not being utilized? So this is the question. That So it's a, it remains a, uh, overall a very internal matter of the Congress party. I don't think Sachin Pilot at this uh, uh, juncture of time in June 2023 is looking for a life outside Congress. Also Ajay Kumar, you know, someone like you as well left the Congress, later came back. Part of this is just to do with the Congress's inability to keep bright talent on board. To engage with someone like you constantly to ensure that, you know, it's, it's a lot of it is a human resource management. And the Congress, at least so far, has been really bad at this, which is why the likes of a Himanta Biswa Sarma, the likes of a Jyotiratya Sindhya have left your party. I mean, you went back, but these people haven't, and they've caused in the Northeast uh, and in Madhya Pradesh significant damage to your party structure. No, I think, look, Raul, it's. Uh... In, for my case, it was something I still, and if, it, if you remember, so it's not anything to do with me, but I think the leadership is, is phenomenally inclusive. There's no debate on that, and my letter is very clear on it. We might have different elements and part of it, like any other party. But it would be very naive, uh, uh, Rahul, to look at it from a human resource perspective for the simple reason is when we were in power, 
then we have no human resources uh, challenges right uh, and then suddenly when we are not in power this human resources challenges seem to be in some amount of so to, to no, but so many leaders in, weren't leaving the bjp even when they so, were uh, much no, smaller and in I'll the just, opposition I'll just, yeah I, i'll just complete now my so yeah my question again is the majority of the leaders if you look at the number of so many the bharatiya janata party has got i think if i remember on 100 odd uh, members of parliament from across um, from the congress uh, whether it's madhya pradesh or shahzad ji was saying that they performing well was they only performed when they, they were able to break it up or go on any place else or what happened in assam any other state but that's the phenomenal amount of engagement in the past few years now if decency and access to leadership uh, is the weakness of whether it is the congress president or whether it is mr gandhi or anybody else in the leadership whether it is priyanka ji or venu ji uh, i don't know you know the question is every time you are not able to uh, satisfy everyone's ambition yes those are challenges we face but i definitely believe that the ability to speak up and to say that because look if if uh, uh, if you are able to uh, and let's put it from this perspective and uh, if uh, and if you can indulge me for a, a couple of uh, minutes yes. uh, let's keep it short yeah, 20 so seconds it, quickly please no, okay so if you are able in karnataka you are all the bjp guys jumping ship some of the other you know the you are able to pick up this few leaders and say look at the number of people who shifted ships across across who has okay so your argument is even if someone like a vasundhara rajay is not happy with the way she's being treated because it's not as but democratic again, as the congress she can't are, speak out no, no, the congress of gelot has a problem or sachin has a pilot problem they can speak it out rahul if that is the case then why was sachin pilot's activities called anti party by sukhjinder randava in the spirit of democracy they should have said it's perfectly legal and perfectly party uh, in the party interest secondly he said and i i'm shocked ajay kumar made this disclosure he said that when there's power there's no so called human resource problem he is saying therefore that the congress leaders are all power hungry our party does not face such kind of problems is because we have a ideological base and we have a leadership and that is why we are together and secondly look at the times when we were not in power and we have been in the opposition for the longest period of time but our leaders did not walk some away left never walked some, out some some left Singh of course Mahat some people are always going to for no. instance mr jagdish shetter left no. but the reason why overwhelmingly this problem is not seen and this problem is seen in the congress when it was at the peak of power most of the fights in the no. congress and the splits in the congress have taken place in 60s and 70s when even no. mr antony etc have left this is because in congress it is inc i need chair and there is no i need commitment to no, ideological persuasion but the bigger persuasion. difference from a data perspective no. is when a congress leader leaves ajay kumar he tends to take his karyakartas and his structure with him when a bjp leader were to leave he unlike, he is not able to carry the party karyakarta and the voter with him it happened in the case of yadurappa but in the case of the likes of kalyan singh uma bharti it failed they left but they couldn't succeed outside the bjp so they ultimately had to come back see look lot of people have left us and come back i mean and i like uh, mr punawala's acronyms and all the commitment big big words and all that the bharatiya jumla party and juta party will continue to tell these kind of statements but i'm just coming to the point is the they are disemboweled at the you know madhya pradesh the people who are, flo- are leaving their party right now karnataka they are leaving how many of them have left all across in bengal whole party bjp shifted back to the tmc so it's 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 quite you know interesting when you when they come and try to create a narrative the narrative is okay that one sec one sec sir they have a guy called bridge bhushan singh in the parliament sitting there uh, and wants to get rid of posco and he came from the samajwadi party if i remember so this kind of stuff look there have been people who have been flowed for political gains that's their own cross, uh, cross to bear the fact is that this is i don't know if any of your political experts who are on the panel today would have seen that the kind of engagement but this karnataka with the rajasthan issue to be resolved they have been following congress and it is a it is a very positive change i am telling you watching from the sideline you might say that there's a lot of work to be done but i tell you something that there is rajasthan is going to i told it on a previous show, some other show is going to surprise you you will see it and i'm very sure that such a uh, mr pilot and mr gelot okay. will find let's a let's see the ground. congress was able to pepper over its differences okay. rahul in karnataka our differences between sachin and gelot so deep that the karnataka model can't be followed in rajasthan or can it no rahul you were absolutely right the first time when i was speaking you see the differences are too deep and i will first uh, because you know every time one speaks about congress nowadays we should speak about bjp first because otherwise people object that you're not, not balancing the bjp has a problem 
I think BJP's bigger problem is what happened in Karnataka, that a tall old leader was pushed to the backgrounds and the BJP couldn't recover. Again, in Rajasthan, similar problem. And now in Sh uh, it could well happen in no, Madhya Pradesh also. On how they'll handle how they handle it. The bigger problem is that BJP has a much better system where the top leadership is powerful. You recall in 2009 when Vasundra was asked to move from the LOP, his post in Rajasthan, she brought her MLS to Delhi and it, was, it took Rajnath Singh a tremendous amount of effort to control that rebellion. But, but now the leadership, no Modi and Shah. now Modi Shah are a different ball game altogether, although they have three, four candidates for chief minister post and there is one, one dark horse also. Sachin Pilot's problem is different, Rahul. After that 2020 rebellion and then uh, what Ashok Gehloth managed when the party high command sent the now president of the party to hold a meeting of the MLAs, a parallel meeting was organized in Jaipur and Malikarjun Kharge couldn't do anything. Gehloth has managed to establish this fact that he can bring down the government before the elections. Now what Sachin Pilot fears is the party president in the state, Dutatra, is a Gehloth loyalist. By the time it comes down to ticket distribution, Gehloth will corner all the tickets. If Sachin had 19 loyal MLAs last time when he staged the rebellion, he may not be left with anybody after the elections. So Sachin has to make a decision about himself. What's he thinking according to you? Rahul, it could, I think the idea of launching a party is not closed. I think... Uh, but uh, he can't pull it off in six months, it's inconceivable. See, it's very, it's, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. the finances, he it's doesn't come very from a business difficult. background. I am watching uh, something that is happening in a political advisory company. There, is, there are new teams being formulated. In IPEG. Uh, and one will have to wait and see, they have started something what is called a North India project. One will wait and see that who are the targets. I hear Rajasthan and Haryana. May I just add one line, very quick line. What Rahul said is that uh, if you heard what Mr. K.C. Venugopal said, he said, ye mamla humne high command pe chhod diya hai. Adi the high command was in charge when they were trying to effect a leadership change in September. See, what Rahul, Rahul, that time the high command was Gandhi's. Gandhi. Sachin Pilot may become chief minister. He still wants rotation. Sachin to get a good deal. Get a good deal. So when no, the Gailoth high command is failing. The problem is Gehloth doesn't want it and the high command can't enforce its writ. The threat of Sachin is smaller than the Gehloth's threat. Simple. That's the equation in Rajasthan. So let's look just for a moment at some of the other questions from the seawater tracker for Rajasthan. This is on the Gehloth Raje Bonhomi and how this impacts uh, Vasundhara Raje Sindhya. Remember, Ashok Gehloth made a few comments about how the Vasundhara Raje, uh, how Vasundhara Raje helped save the government when Sachin had rebelled. So would this Bonhomi impact Vasundhara Raje? 47% of the respondents are saying yes, 51% of BJP respondents are saying yes, it will impact uh, Vasundhara Raje, 24% say no. Uh, what, what do people make of the Gehloth Modi friendly statements? Remember, unlike uh, some of the Congress leaders who have been taking very strong positions on questions of Gautam Adani, on questions of the central government, Ashok Gehloth's been more ambivalent. He doesn't seem to be quite in disagreement with the government in the way that someone like Rahul Gandhi is. So he's now very, he's, he's separating himself from the kind of positions that RG is taking. So uh, what do people make of this? Can Gelo join the BJP? 24% say yes, but I think that's just in a manner of asking and the manner of speaking, that's quite difficult for it to happen. Is it just a curtsy statement, which is what 61% of the respondents are saying, that he was friendly just as a curtsy statement, not because they had any real intention of joining uh, the uh, joining the BJP. Let me put this question to Rahul Verma, Vasundra Raje Sindhya, and comparing her with someone like a Yadurappa, the similarities, the dissimilarities, and the ability of Vasundra Raje to hurt the BJP if she doesn't get a good deal. There is no indication at this moment, which is six months to go, that Vasundra Raje will be given any pride of place. How is she most likely to react and what impact could that have on the BJP's fortunes? See, uh, uh, Rahul, it's a hard question to answer how she will react. Uh, but I can definitely uh, uh, reflect on what impact will it uh, happen on BJP's prospects in Rajasthan. Uh, I think minimal. Uh, the reason uh, is twofold. One, for most rebellions in BJP, whenever people have walked out of the party, they have not been able to take the base of the party uh, with them. Uh, uh, the one exception would be Yadurappa, uh, uh, who managed to get 9 or 10 percent votes for himself in 2013 in Karnataka. And the reason Yadurappa could do that, 
because he was one of the architects of BJP in Karnataka. Plus, he comes from a, a, a community which has a very solid vote base and has been voting for the BJP, right? So he basically mobilized his entire community or a large part of his community against the BJP and for himself. Uh, unfortunately for Vasundhara Raje, uh, uh, she's not that kind of community leader. Uh, and uh, she does not have that kind of control or command over uh, a Rajasthan BJP organization. She has been basically pushed to margins for now many years. And uh, uh, this is not to say she's not an important leader uh, and all that, but I don't think uh, even if she uh, uh, sort of like is made to sit back, uh, uh, her reactions or her uh, movement away from the party is going to uh, damage their prospects. In Second the last point, Rajasthan and then, elections, the BJP had 39% of the vote share. In 2013, they had 45% of the vote share. Rahul Shivastav, how much of that 39% could be imperiled if Vasundhara Rajay isn't treated well? Rahul Verma seems to suggest that the damage could be very minimal. See, uh, the BJP has such a structure. See, Kalyan Singh rebelled, finished. Uma Bharti rebelled. Today she is complaining on ordinary things in Madhya Pradesh. Uh, you don't have BJP leaders rebelling and really going out because the BJP is not, you know, it knows, it rides on its shoulders of a system called RSS. Once that system withdraws, BJP leaders find it very difficult. Then there is a huge ideological positioning. If you are not part of it, then you are gone. But whereas uh, the Congress, you have success stories all over. Hemant Biswa Sarma, you have got Jagan, you have got so many other leaders, Mamta Banerjee. Now in that scenario, yes, it is true. Vasundhara Raje uh, is a strong factor, Rahul. You can't deny her. Uh, I think Vasundhara Raje has been acting very differently from what Vasundhara Raje used to be. There is a sense of, one can see that there is a bit of desperation. There is no clarity till now that she is going to be the chosen one. And the BJP part is keeping everything very open-ended. But there is one factor which I will like always to remember. With Sachin Pilot, somebody like a Sachin Pilot and a Congress party gearing itself targeting Vasundhara Raje for a probe, will Vasundhara Raje and her supporters like the Congress to come back to power? Uh, Rahul, may I just have yes, yes. Rahul, uh, don't mind me saying this, I'm not trying to sound holier than thou. The Congress party is a party of individual leaders. And therefore, when an individual leader leaves the party fold, he is still potent. The BJP, on the other hand, is a party-first-driven kind of a system where leaders are actually propelled by the party and the ideology. I'm not trying to make honey and mother statements, motherhood statements. This is a true fact. So therefore, the tallest leaders of the BJP are the leaders of the BJP because they represent that party structure and the ideological foundation of that party. And therefore, for you to say, first of all, the leaders don't rebel in that manner. And, and we are being very uncharitable to Vasundhara Ji. She has made no such statement to, to you know, impute such kind of motives, etc. to her. She has been a disciplined party soldier for the party for so many years. I think that it's just unfair to keep targeting somebody like that. But having said that, it's very difficult in the BJP to even rebel like that or to become successful after their rebellion. Please see what is Jagdish Shetar Ji now. He could not manage to win even his own assembly seat. Did Mr. Jagdish Shetar win? Okay, I want to put this one other question out about who's the biggest BJP face in Rajasthan. This is the serious challenge that the BJP faces. They would want someone like a, a Gajendra Singh Shekhawat to come out and be the new generation BJP leadership. Uh, but on the question of who people think is the number one face among BJP supporters, Vasundhara Rajay is still at 38%, Gajendra Singh Shekhawat at 18%. Overall, Vasundhara Rajay at 37%, Gajendra Singh Shekhawat at 15%, Satish Punya at 11%. Sanjay Kumar, therein lies the BJP's challenge that the central leadership, for valid reasons, may want to look ahead. But in the state, as was the case in Karnataka, uh, with Yadurappa, Vasundhara Rajay Sindhya remains the number one choice uh, for Chief Minister or at least to be projected as the BJP's local face. Uh, uh, see, comparing Rajasthan and Karnataka would be difficult uh, in this respect because in Karnataka BJP was the ruling party and when you had, when people were doing the surveys in Karnataka, the, even the sitting chief minister was rated very badly, uh, much lower compared to the present chief minister Siddharamaya. Uh, this is about Rajasthan where BJP is not the ruling party and when this question is being asked, people are rating Vasundhara Raja much higher compared to, you know, the other leaders who are, in your opinion, the choice of the central leadership. I think, uh, 
uh, I would disagree uh, that you know Vasundhara Raja, Vasundhara Raja seems to be more popular because of a couple of factors. One, she has been the chief minister right. and you get some advantage being the chief minister of the state for five years. So that memory is with the people. But I think uh, the other leaders are not active in Rajasthan. They are from Rajasthan. They are active in the central politics. That is why their ratings are lower compared to Vasundhara Raja Sindhya. Uh, so I think uh, if you go by the people's choice, yes, at the moment, people believe, people of Rajasthan believe it is Vasundhara Raja Sindhya who is the most popular leader and their preference would be for Vasundhara Raja to be the chief minister. But now it's for the BJP to decide whether they want to have someone projected as the chief ministerial face or not, whether they want to go by the people's choice, people's, or whether they want to go by people's wishes or they want to take the decision in an administrative manner, sitting in the room and deciding who should be the face of BJP for the... Now, which was how they like to deal with this issue? Would they build up someone like a Gajendra Singh Shekhawat and push him forward, or would they accept post Karnataka that you have to treat Vasundhara Raja gently? If you are too rough, she could set it out, and that would hurt the BJP's prospects in some seats. Exactly, Rahul. That's the issue. See, the problem is that we have a lot of names coming. We have uh, Vasundhara Raja, Shekhawat, Gajendra Shekhawat, even Ashwini Vaishnav, Satish Punia, and there is one dark horse, ex-IAS officer, whose name is also doing the round. But I think post Karnataka, a lot has changed. I think in the assessment of the BJP, there is there is an idea now that you need to treat your own regional satraps with greater amount of dignity and respect because if you don't, you lose ground. And I think that will go in favor of somebody like a Vasundra or a Shivraj Singh Chauhan because the BJP realizes that it cannot totally fight elections on Narendra Modi, especially assembly elections in states like this. And since uh, somebody like a Prime Minister Modi may not be fully on ticket in these two states. He's very popular in Lok Sabha. I think that may definitely, that has already, has already forced a rethink in the BJP about Vas uh, Vasudhar Raja Sindhya. So he's not out in the woods yet. But Rashid Kidwai, the counter to this is that uh, Karnataka is different because Yadurappa literally built the structure himself. In Rajasthan, Vasundhar Raja is their biggest face. But the structure may remain intact even if she uh, were to leave or sit it out or sulk. The counter, the, the third theory of course is that she could possibly tacitly set up candidates who could damage the BJP's prospects. And remember, Rajasthan elections have typically, and I'll just put out the set about the vote share from the past, Rajasthan elections have typically been closed. In the last elections, uh, both the BJP and the Congress had 39% uh, vote share each, even though the Congress's seat share was much higher. The Congress had 100 seats out of 200, the BJP only 73. But in terms of vote, both their vote share was equal. So in, after having lost Karnataka, in a state where there's only a bipolar fight, nobody wants to take a panga or will they? Absolutely, uh, Rahul, you're spot on. As far as Vasundra Raja is concerned, the BJP and Sachin in Congress, the state, you know, uh, 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 BJP and the Congress, they cannot, uh, you know, wish them away. They are there to stay. They have support base. They have the ability to make them win or make them lose. So I don't think that's in, uh, that is on the cards. The only thing is if BJP gets 120, 130, 140 kind of, you know, mandate, then obviously they would have a wider choice and they can bring in anyone. But as things stand today, uh, both uh, Mr. Sachin Pilot and and Vasundhara Raja respectively, they are very well in, entrenched in the state politics and they cannot be, you know, kind of removed. And they have, I think both both of them have no, no desire uh, to leave their respective parties and all. They are there to stay. Uh, but, and another very interesting thing is that they are totally poles apart. So there is no possibility of, like, you know, a lot of proximity. If you go to Jaipur, everyone talks about a kind of tacit understanding between uh, Vasundhara Raja and Ashok Gailod. But there is a total kind of, you know, very sharp uh, dividing line between Vasundhara Raja and Sachin Pilot. So that's the long and short of Pakistan. Both parties to... have a lot to think about. The Congress more so. Their fight is out in the open. In the BJP, there is a subterranean kind of tension which the party could deal with or it could hurt the party that we don't know. But we've covered a lot of ground. You know, there has been no halla gulla, shor sharaba, tutu meme, which is great, which is how I like to run the show. There's focus on data, there's focus on deep quality analytics, and you've heard from sharp analysts and they put out their perspectives. We'll deal with Madhya Pradesh and uh, Chhattisgarh next week. So we'll have 
from now up till the general elections of 2024 as frequently as possible, looking at different data sets emerging from the agencies, uh, this political stock exchange, Sanjay Kumar and his team at CSDS keep doing a lot of work, uh, Rahul Verma and his team at CPR oftentimes come up with interesting studies. So we look at that, give it a platform, try and put it in context to help you understand Indian politics better in a more deeper fashion. Thank you all for joining us. You're on board the news track. More sensational revelations have emerged in the Delhi stabbing horror case. Sahil, the 20-year-old AC mechanic who stabbed 16-year-old 16, 16 Sakshi to death, had planned the murder. Sahil has reportedly told the police that it is indeed him in the CCTV video stabbing Sakshi. Before stabbing her 20 times and smashing her head six times with a slab of stone, Sahil Khan plotted the cold-blooded murder and called Sakshi to the crime spot and waited to ambush her. When Sakshi arrived, Sahil went on a stabbing spree and crushed her head multiple times in full public glare as passers-by looked on. The preliminary investigation reveals a breakup drove Sahil to kill Sakshi. Sahil was furious as Sakshi went back to her earlier boyfriend, Praveen. Sahil confronted Sakshi on the breakup before murdering her. After the murder, Sahil switched off his phone to dodge the police and fled to UP's Bulanchehar. He threw away the murder weapon, a knife, in Delhi's Ritala area. बताया जा रहा है कि साहिल मैकेनिक का काम करता था, जबकि सरफराज जो उसके पिता हैं, वो बढ़ाई का काम करते थे, दरवाजा, खिड़कियां ये सब बनाने का काम वो किया करते थे। फिलहाल पुलिस साहिल से लगातार पूछताछ कर रही है और ये पता लगाने की कोशिश कर रही है कि आखिर इस वारदात को अंजाम देने की प्लानिंग उसने कब रची थी? Sahil has now admitted to killing Sakshi during interrogation by the police. Scientific investigation पे पूरा जोर है, कोशिश कर रहे हैं सारे जितने भी इसमें हम लोग को evidences मिल पाएं, वो सब हम लोग जुगाड़ रहे हैं. Further investigation is on its way. Sakshi, continuously harassed by Sahil, had confided in one of her friends and had urged him to help her. साक्षी ने यही बोला मैं बीस बार बता चुका हूँ कि मेरे को एक लड़का टॉर्चर कर रहा है भाई मैं थोड़ी मेरी मदद करो तो मैं तो उसकी मदद ही करने गया था उस लड़के को समझाने ही गया था कहाँ मिला था साहिल आप यहीं पर ही जहाँ पे मर्डर हुआ है जहाँ पे मर्डर पहले भी वहीं मिला था वहीं पर उसी ने बुलाया था वाइल प्लॉटिंग साक्षी इज मर्डर साहिल हैड बीन चैटिंग विद मल्टीपल गर्ल्स द पुलिस आर प्रोबिंग इफ दिस वाज द रीजन फॉर साक्षी ब्रेकिंग अप विद हिम इस कातिल को हर हाल में अगले छह महीने के अंदर अंदर फांसी की सजा होनी चाहिए इसके ऊपर सरकार को काम करना चाहिए कोर्ट्स को काम करना चाहिए डेली चीफ मिनिस्टर अरविंद केजरीवाल हैज प्रॉमिस स्ट्रिक्ट एक्शन फॉर द ग्रूस मर्डर उसको कठोर से कठोर सजा दिलाने के लिए दिल्ली सरकार जो है कोर्ट के अंदर बड़े से बड़ा वकील खड़ा करेगी आज मैं एलजी साहब से हाथ जोड़ के निवेदन करना चाहती हूं कि देश के संविधान ने आपको दिल्ली की कानून व्यवस्था की दिल्ली की सुरक्षा व्यवस्था की जिम्मेदारी दी है लेकिन आप अब 24 घंटे सिर्फ और सिर्फ राजनीति करने में लगाते हैं अरविंद केजरीवाल जी के काम रोकने में लगाते हैं अगर आप अपनी संविधानिक जिम्मेदारी निभाएं तो आज दिल्ली में ये स्थिति नहीं होगी the BJP, however, is calling it a case of love jihad, pointing to Sahil wearing a Hindu sacred thread or kalava. Sakshi's parents have sought capital punishment for Sahil. Will Sakshi get justice in death? With Himanshu Mishra in Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today. This is where we wrap up the news track tonight. For your time and your trust, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you at 8 p.m. tomorrow evening. Till then, from all of us here, goodbye, good night.